You're listening to Tory Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, there are some wonderful things about the times you live in, and one of them is the epic wardrobe veil. I'm not settled yet. I'm, I dropped my phone. Your brand new uh, phone. Yes. <laughs> With that, it, that doesn't have its, you know, rubber case yet. Yeah, that's and, like and having it, sex without a condom and thinking, well, you know, what are the odds? Oh, I can tell you all about those odds. <laughs> we have a little baby out here. Welcome, grandchild. Who just turned six weeks old, yeah. Wow. So that's, those are those odds. I don't know if you remember, but way back when, a couple, three years ago, maybe two, maybe six months ago, I told you about how uh, I once, my car broke down. And I was taking Eve to the school bus in my pajamas. Yes. And I had to walk home like three miles in my pajamas. Yes, and I gave you a brilliant solution. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I know. Well, here, this is what I did yesterday. Uh-oh. Wait, wait. First, I have to mention my brilliant solution, oh, okay. yes. which is yes. just to keep a plastic bag with, like, a sweatsuit in your car. Yeah, if I could remember. So what happened? For Eve's birthday, which was just a few days ago, um, we treated her to go to the, I don't know what you call it, the hair place. Salon. Where they, the salon. The salon or yes. the hairdresser or whatever. Right. And the one in Williams is kind of glamorous for Williams. You know, I mean, this, <laughs> I, this what does that actually mean? That's like <laughs> well, kind of gourmet for, for Topeka. What does that mean, really? <laughs> Or made for McDonald's. Right. Um, so I don't know, it's kind of fancy. Okay. But it's the place where pretty much everybody goes. So it's always buzzing with, you know, people getting manicures and pedicures and all haircuts and hair dyes and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And I have two wardrobes. One wardrobe is for the ranch when I'm not going anywhere. Okay. The other wardrobe is for when I'm going out in public. Okay, wait, and question, question. Yes, which, yes. which category do the pajamas go into? Um, well, those definitely would be ranch. Okay, checking. And this is along the lines of pajamas. Ah. So I thought I was going to drop her off. And I had on this sweatshirt that with a giant hand on it, flipping the bird. Ooh. And I was like, well, no one's going to see me. I'm dropping her off, right? <laughs> and, then, and so she brings our hairdresser out to see the baby. Oh, boy. And Gina says, oh, I have time to cut your hair if you want. And I'm like, okay. So uh, I forgot I was wearing that shirt until everybody was staring at, at your chest. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man. Don't they give you a, one of those little plastic things to put on? I mean, I'd be huddled under that like it was a tent <laughs> in a storm. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted, oh, well, F it. Well, yeah, that's kind of the finger, shirt. Whatever that finger symbol stands for, it. Yeah. How's that? That'll work. I went from being the hippie scum to the kind of redneck scum or the hippie redneck scum or something. I don't know. Maybe instead of uh, sweats in the car, you should keep one of those hair salon plastic uh, yeah. garments in the car. Or a sheet. No, oh, not wait, in your neighborhood. No, no, there are people who do wear those. In your yes, neighborhood? There are. No. Not me, not me, not me. Okay. Not me, not well, ever. Well, I believe... A, ja a they... jacket, maybe, would if... come in handy. If you were a celebrity, you would you would be getting one of those clickbait things that say, epic wardrobe fail, that would be showing yeah, up in everybody's true. mailbox. Yeah. It was an epic wardrobe fail. Yeah. I'm glad we have the language for that now. There are certain things that I regret about our language. Well, yeah. Like, and I mean this actually, like as an example, people uh -huh. saying like every other word and also using so before every sentence. Oh, I hate that. But epic wardrobe fail is a piece of yes. modern language that I can really get behind. Thank you, Janet Jackson and J uh, Justin Timberlake. That's where that came from. Yes. Yes, I do remember that. And and I was delighted with it. I don't, I don't think I ever... I don't think I ever saw the actual wardrobe fail. And when they showed me the replay on the video, I'm looking at it saying, 
what where is the breast i don't i don't see what are they talking about and same yeah i don't quite understand you have to really be looking for trouble to find that trouble how big back then were tv screens anyway in my neighborhood now you drive past people's condominiums and an entire living room wall is occupied by a tv set and i want that you want that yeah What's the point of living in that beautiful nature if you're entire instead of those gorgeous windows that you could look out, although you do have them festooned with bird strike averting spiders yes. and decals and Christmas lights and but still I mean I still have your spider. Ah uh, yes, the bird deterring spider that you've promised me so often. I keep looking at it and saying I have to mail this to Turi. You're never gonna the, mail that. The woodpecker to me. spider. You're I'll, gonna, send, I'll send it. You're going to leave it on my grave when I die is what you're going to do. I'm going to let it crawl up and down. My grave? I'll turn it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up and down the tombstone, just up and down for eternity. Can I specify that in my will, that I would like a spider that crawls up and down my gravestone? Is that allowed? Sure, but I'm hoping I will get it too before then. Well, we'll see, won't we? Here's the other thing. One of my girlfriends, who happens to be black, said to me one day, what is it with white people that they leave their curtains open all the time? They leave their drapes open. Like, you can see right into their houses. And I said, I, I, I don't know. But in my house, the spousal unit and I had early marriage fighting over leaving the blinds up because I cannot stand people seeing and looking and prying and peeping into my house. And you don't like it either, which is why you live on a remote mountaintop. Where right, and I hate sunshine. I just want it to be dark in here all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, nice work picking Arizona then. Anyway, so... <laughs> well, I'm one in the forest. So, no, you're not. You're on a bald mountaintop. Shaded. No. Yeah. Sorry, no. But I've been there. You can't fool me. So now the New York Times, like this week, has an article about it's a mark of status to leave your curtains open all the time it it means that you feel so secure that nothing can touch you that you don't really care who sees your stuff and i'm thinking yeah if you want it here it is come and get it yeah like that but 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 here's the thing it's not so much my stuff that i worry about people seeing because you know help yourself to my crappy stuff I just don't want them spying on me. And what did this New York Times article have to say? Do, do, do rich people or upper class people or white people, and by the way, the friend of mine who asked me this is in very comfortable financial circumstances, to put it mildly. What I don't want people to see is me. I, I don't want people to see me just moving around my house. It makes me feel unsafe. And it makes me feel embarrassed about what I would look like. Like, say I drop something under the couch, and there's my tush right there in the window while I'm <laughs> getting stuff. Do I want people walking by my house to observe me crawling under? Think of the pictures people could take. And I look a lot worse than I thought that I do because I have had to take a selfie because of an article that I helped write that they needed a picture <laughs> for. And I'm looking at myself in this selfie. It took me all day to get one I could live with. And uh, I thought, this is when I have control. Just imagine if I didn't close my window shades at night. You either see my selfie looking like this, or you see my backside crawling under a couch. Or, you know, what if I'm or scratching? Or see a murder happen. Like that Alfred Hitchcock movie where they saw the murder up through their window, through someone else's window. Yeah, rear window. Remember what that's right. called. Right, well, rear window. But the heck of yeah. that, I, I won't, don't want them to see me, like, pulling the elastic on my tights around. I, I don't need it. That's Running around naked. I don't do that. Waving your hands. <laughs> do you do that up on the mountain? Run around that naked? That could scare them away. Well, that, okay. I just do that with cows. So we've come full circle, <laughs> then, what you're saying, is that it's yeah. not that people are worried about their stuff and it's not that they're worried about how they look it's that if you're well to do you just feel like you can scare people away by your own eminence i don't know there's no well to do these up by me yeah you I have to everybody's windows are closed we're all we're all poor 
No, there's that woman from California who has a whole spread you mentioned and comes up like five minutes out of the year with her dogs and lets them run all over your property. She can't be poor. Well, she has a little tiny house. She's never there. How would you, no. Wouldn't you like to have a little tiny house that you just get to keep for no particular reason? I would. Um, No, I don't think I would. Huh. Because then you, when you run into issues and you actually live far away and say your plumbing blows up, and nobody's there. And Well, it still sounds pretty luxurious. There's really nothing in it anyway, except a bed. And See, a couch. she can leave her windows open. Just prove my point. Yeah. Just proved <laughs> yes. my point. And the worst tenant, oh, wait till I tell you. Oh, yeah. The worst tenant in the world, not because she doesn't pay her rent, but because she feels that paying her rent entitles her to order us around like she owns us. Yeah. The one I was praying would leave who finally decided she would leave. This woman yeah. apparently has never opened a window in her life, I guess, because she's been there seven years. She says that when she moved, her mattress had mold on the bottom of it, and therefore we owe her $2,000 to buy a new mattress. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, where's that written in the lease? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. And then she and then she lists all the things that she never complained about, but that she most of which she only mentioned when she gave her notice, and all of which were features of the 120 year old house that we mentioned to her when she rented it. So I am practicing. I have a new practice now. It's called ignore, ignore, ignore. Exactly. Ignore. She'll never win in court. Yeah, my feeling is like, and I'm not even going to say that. The only thing that makes yeah. me nervous is that she knows a lot of lawyers, but no lawyer is going to do this for her. So, you know, if she wants yeah. to, if she wants to take me to small claims court, it will be another fun excuse to go out to California. Wee! So that's, <laughs> I've, it's interesting the things that people decide you're responsible for. Yes. It's a whole culture of blame. That's why I could never be a landlord. Well. Because I. I would just put on my sweatshirt with the finger on it. <laughs> Can I borrow that? Dance outside the window. <laughs> Can I borrow that Here. shirt? All right. Here. Thank okay. you. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me, and available on Audible. 